Hello, my name is Joe Lowe. I'm the Division Director for the South Dakota Division of Wildland Fire Suppression. In this video, you will be learning about the tactics meeting, the planning meeting, and the operations briefing. The planning process provides the following benefits. It enhances safety, it clarifies roles, it communicates the objectives of the incident commander. It provides a base against which progress can be measured. It solves problems during the planning process. Problems are identified and solved. It allows for predictions and forecasting. And above all, it builds stronger teams. Let's take a look at the ICS forms used in the tactics meeting. The purpose of the ICS Form 215, Operations Planning Worksheet, is to communicate the decisions made during the planning meeting concerning resource assignments to the resource unit. The worksheet is used by the resource unit to complete assignment lists and by the logistics section for ordering resources for the incident. The information entered on the form by the operations section chief is later used on the ICS 204 form. We will now give you instruction on completing an ICS 215 operational planning worksheet. In box one, print the name assigned to the incident. In box two, enter the date and time prepared. In box three, enter the time interval for which the information applies and record the start and end date and time for the operational period. In box four, enter the division, letter, or location of the work assignment for the resources. In box five, enter the specific work assignments given to each of the divisions. In box six, we are going to record resources. First complete the resource headings, both the kind and type appropriate for the incident. Enter for the appropriate resources the number of resources by type and the number of resources available. Then record the number of resources needed. In box seven, enter the specific location the needed resources are to report for the work assignments. In box eight, request the time of arrival. In box nine, enter the total number of resources by type required on hand and ordered. In box 10, record the name and position for the person completing the form. The purpose of the ICS Form 215A incident safety analysis is to identify and mitigate any safety issues identified in the planning meeting. This form is filled out by the incident safety officer. We will now give you instruction on how to fill out an incident safety analysis. In box one, list the incident name, box two the date, box three the time. The bottom of the form is pretty self-explanatory. The bottom of the form is used to identify safety risks and the mitigation for the identified risk. Realize that individual management teams conduct their meetings with subtle differences. Guidance is furnished in your course materials as to the essential topics to be covered in each meeting. Let's take a look at those involved in an actual tactics meeting and have them tell you what their responsibility is. I'm Steve Hosnerl. I'm the planning section chief. I'm responsible for facilitating the tactics meeting. I ensure that all required functions are present and that all the information captured on the organizational planning worksheet, the 215, and the incident safety analysis, the 215A, is accurate and complete because that information is vital for completion of the incident action plan, the IAP, for the next operational period. The operations section chief plays a key role at this meeting. So let's talk to an operations section chief and see what he does. I'm the operations section chief. The operations section chief plays a major role in the tactics meeting. Prior to the meeting, I gather information from the division group supervisors and the branch directors. I use that information to formulate the tactics that will be needed on each division and group in the next operational period. Then I come into the meeting with that information and fill out a form called the ICS Form 215. The ICS Form 215 is called the Operational Planning Worksheet. The second step in the tactics meeting then is to 
meet with the safety officer. The operations and the safety officer then communicate back and forth in a direct fashion in order to identify and mitigate any safety hazards. They do that communication process by filling out a form called the ICS Form 215A. Then lastly, to con conclude the tactics meeting, uh, the final step is to make sure that the operations section chief is communicating too with the logistics section chief and the planning section chief in order to make sure that all functions can support the plan as planned for the next operational period. The resource unit leader is also important. Let's find out what that person is responsible for. Hello, I'm the resource unit leader. I work in the planning section. My function at the tactics meeting is to work with the operations section chief on the ICS 215 Operational Planning Worksheet. I gather information on required resources for the incident and reconcile resource orders to be sure all equipment and personnel are available for the next operational shift. Safety is always the first priority on an incident. Let's find out what the role of the safety officer is in this meeting. My name is Gail Geyer and I'm an incident safety officer and my role in the tactics meeting is to basically monitor the uh, operations uh, section chief and their planning process through the 215 process. And what I do is, is I make sure that their tactics are sound and that all safety hazards can be mitigated. And I work with them and we try to make sure that the operations plan for the next operational period is done safely and uh, it also accomplishes the goals that they want to accomplish. During that process, I develop the uh, incident risk analysis and identify hazards that will occur during that operational period. And then I go and uh, assist them in making the plan work. The logistics section chief's function at the tactics meeting is as follows. Personnel and logistical support factors must be considered in determining tactical operations. Lack of logistical support can mean the difference between success and failure. If the required tactical resources will not be available, then an adjustment should be made to the tactics and operations being planned for the operational period. Lack of available resources could require a reassessment of tactics and perhaps the overall strategy. You have now seen a tactics meeting. Take a minute to review with your groups what you have seen in this video. We have seen how a tactics meeting is conducted. The next meeting is the planning meeting. This is where the plan is ratified. Welcome to the 1400 planning meeting. I'm the planning section chief. Reminder, if you could turn your radios down, cell phones off, please. We'll start with incident objectives. They're posted up here on the board. They haven't changed. We'll start with incident situation. Field operations section chief. Good afternoon. Current status of the fire starting around in Division Alpha. We've got the dozer line in place. Crews are continuing to uh, mop up and improve up to drop for the Division Break in Bravo. Division Bravo, the line is in place for the most part, but we're continuing to do some burnout as we have a lot of unburned fuel between the fire line and uh, uh, the fire itself. Division Charlie, same thing. We're bringing our dozer line down from the division break, trying to marry up with uh, Division Bravo. Coming around into Division Yankee, this line is in, and crews are, are patrolling and mopping up 100 foot in along the existing Forest Service roads. And coming around into Division Zulu, this is looking real good, and we're basically patrolling and mopping up 100 foot in there also. Weather? Incident Meteorologist. Good afternoon. The predicted fire weather for tomorrow will start out with partly to mostly sunny skies in the morning and then a chance for thunderstorms in the afternoon and those will be of the scattered variety. The winds will be northeast tomorrow and then as the day goes on they're going to switch into the southeast 
at 5 to 15 miles per hour in the afternoon. Max temps tomorrow will be 87 to 90. Minimum RH, 30%, and that should occur between 1 and 2 p.m. Chance of precipitation is 30%. Chance of wetting rain will be right around 10%. And just as a heads up, the day after tomorrow, we're looking at the potential for red flag conditions with hotter, drier, windier weather. Any questions? I have one question um, with regards to the wind shift for tomorrow. Have you pinpointed that time to, uh, more specifically? or we'll Right now, we're looking forecast. at the wind shift to begin to occur around 1 p.m., around uh, 1,300. And then probably by late afternoon, we're looking at around 3 p.m., we'll pick up that pretty brisk southeast wind at 5 to 15. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Fire behavior, fire behavior analyst. Our previous fire behavior uh, during the daytime, we looked at the uh, fire as run with the wind and slope, uh, mainly to the north with some torching, short crown runs, and spotting. Overnight, uh, mainly confined to surface fire uh, with the burnout operation that occurred. There was some isolated torching and resulted in some short range spotting also. Uh, the heavy fuels are very dry, live fuels are drought stressed, and they're still going to remain at critical levels. Uh, with the topography, uh, your steep ground is going to be on the north and the east sides of the fire. Uh, what we're looking at overall uh, with the fire is predicted uh, spotting potential is fairly moderate in all the divisions. Uh, in your line divisions, you've got a good opportunity to mop up in Alpha, Yankee, and Zulu. Uh, should be just uh, creeping and smoldering fire behavior with the heavy fuels as they burn, continue to burn. Uh, Watch for an undetected spot out in this uh, rough country over here, though. That's going to be your main concerns. Uh, looking at uh, in Bravo and Charlie, mainly backing fire behavior, a uh, good opportunity to burn out and clean that line up early. Uh, watch for the wind shifts, though. Any questions? Division assignments, planning operations section chief. Thanks a lot. What we've seen coming at us for fire weather and our fire behavior combined with our current fire status out here, we've built a pretty good plan to accommodate for tomorrow's uh, day shift. We're looking at, again, um, setting up our our divisions, divisions Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie to finish cons constructing our dozer lines and pushing in more safety zones in there for our crews that will be working in there. At the same time, as we move through Div Division Yankee, down through Division Zulu, and uh, we'll pick up some uh, the existing Forest Service system roads and work our fire line off that. Um, our, plan, our, our plan shows that. We're in Divisions Alpha, Alpha Bravo, Charlie, Yankee, and Zulu, up, just right up here on the board. Um, our big concern right now is ensuring the work rest guidelines with regards to our dozer bosses. We have some couple unfilled orders for dozer bosses out there. We want to make sure that we can get those filled, we can keep those dozers going, uh, both uh, night shift dozers and day shift dozers. So that's our big, our big concern there is to make sure that we keep our dozers going. Uh, we're looking pretty good for other overhead orders that, that were coming in there. So. Looking at uh, looking at the plan, I think we've built up a pretty good uh, day shift plan for uh, for tomorrow, based on what we've got coming at us for our fire weather. Is there any questions? Air operations, air operations branch director. Thank you, Rob. Good afternoon. Uh, the aircraft status for tomorrow's uh, operational period is that we have um, we got two heavy air tankers, uh, tanker 2-2, two, two, tanker 1-6. They'll be uh, stationed at the Rapid City uh, Heavy Air Tanker Base. And we have uh, two uh, single-engine air tankers at the Spearfish Airport. It'll be tanker 461 and tanker 462. Um, along with them, we have a lead. It'd be lead 88, uh, which is stationed at the heavy air tanker base in Rapid City. And also we have two air attacks uh, that will give us continuous coverage uh, over the incident. Uh, the first uh, be one Alpha Bravo and 6-3 Foxtrot are the air attacks. 
Uh, the heavy air tankers and the seats are able to fly at 0900 tomorrow morning, and the air attacks will be off at 0800 off of Rapid City. We also have one Type 3 helicopter and uh, safety, as we discussed earlier. It's a five Mike Alpha. It's going to be dedicated also to medevac. And um, what we've set up is um, a helispot here off of Highway 14A and Camp 5 Road uh, for a helispot. If there's a medevac needed, that that aircraft can come in there and uh, pick pick up whatever is need, needed to be done there. And also for um, observation flights for IC or for operations, we'll do the same. We'll use this H1 Hellespot um, right there to, to get picked up. Also, that ship, uh, that helicopter is going to be dedicated for uh, water drops also. So it'll have a water bucket on it. And the Type 1 helicopter that uh, was requested, um, I requested it to be a standard category helicopter so it can do water drops, and also if you need to move uh, personnel around the fire as a standard category helicopter, it can do that. Um, uh, logistics, as we discussed earlier, um, I moved the heli base to the Spearfish Airport to combine the, the single engine air tanker uh, operation and the heli base all in one, one area. And um, for the making the requests for uh, water bucket drops, with the helicopters, um, if the divisions could go through air attack, means they're going to be on station to order that aircraft. We have a TFR in place, safety. It's at five miles and 2,000 AGL. Any questions? Uh, just one real quick question. Is that hill spot pretty easy to see from the road, or is you got it marked fairly well, flagged in, or what? Yes, sir, and we'll have, a, we'll have the hill spot um, insignia uh, right here, right off. There's a, you can see there's a two-track right here just north of the campground. And the, the hell of spot insignia will be right there. The marking will be there so that you can find that. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you. Yeah, yes. Just just one question as far as that hell of spot. It's right near the highway. And I just was wondering, is there going to be a lot of usage in that hell of spot? I'm kind of concerned about the public stopping along the highway and problems we might have with that. Uh, Good question. Um, yes. I noticed uh, on my way in, here to the meeting that there's a barricade right here with a highway patrol trooper on it. And as long as that stays in place, we shouldn't have be any impact there at all. But yes, it is visible from the highway. So that's something that we'll have to keep an eye on. And we will have a helicopter crew member there receiving that helicopter to load and unload passengers. So this, it'll be covered there. It'll be a manned hell spot. Good. Sounds good. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Safety officer. Good afternoon. I was out here uh, this morning and got a good look around. I think things are really going good in general. Haven't really did seen much as far as, uh, as any safety concerns out there. There's a few things I just want to bring, bring towards you. A lot of that is on the 215A over here, and you guys can take a look at that uh, after the meeting. The main concerns out there are snags. It's a big issue. There's a lot of snags out there, and I discussed the situation with ops, and I think they're going to mitigate that very well. The other situation is communications. Uh, we've had some issues with communications out there. There's a lot of dead zones, and we've been talking a little bit with the communications folks, and I think they're going to mitigate that, and they'll probably talk. We got that second repeater in this morning, and it's being put up on Pillar Peak right now, and it should be on the 205 this evening. Good, so it'll be operational yep. tomorrow. Okay, so the only concern there would be uh, tomorrow we want to make sure that, that all the operations people uh, check out that communications and make sure that there isn't any additional dead spots that we might have to mitigate. And I think that'll take care of that. Uh, the other concern is, is ICP is located right across the highway from the fire, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, as long as that, that roadblock stays in place, we'll be okay. But if that roadblock's lifted, we need to be aware of it, and we need to make our people aware of it so that they, uh, they don't get uh, mixed up with the uh, civilians that are being traveling back and forth across the highway. Uh, the, only other con the only other thing I want to bring up is, is uh, uh, the logistics end of thing. Camp looks really good, but I just did a cursory look through camp, and so tomorrow I'll probably be doing a, a full-blown uh, review of the camp and I don't think we're going to have any problems at all. You're doing a great job and we appreciate it. Thank you. 
logistics section chief. As far as logistics, just a couple points. I know we've got some uh, outstanding resource orders, but as you all know, we're competing against other incidents and we're not high on the priority list. I do have one confirmed. Dozer Boss should be in by 1600 today for you operations. I'll have an update at the 1500 conference call with expanded on the other outstanding resource orders. As far as cash items, Rocky Mountain Cash Truck should be in this night about uh, midnight. So if everything goes well, uh, we'll have your line orders filled and out there to you about 0900 in the tomorrow morning. And on the uh, repeater issue, uh, just a reminder that uh, once we get that repeater up, we'll need to come back in and get everybody cloned up in the morning. So it may delay the progress for some of your folks uh, in the morning getting to the line. Any questions for logistics? Yeah, I just got one issue. As far as water goes, do we have plenty of water available for tomorrow and the next day? Is we got plenty of water, Gail. We've got a reefer full of ice, a true 40-foot reefer full of ice, and uh, six pallets of water on hand with standing orders. So we should be in real good shape as far as our water and our uh, Powerade and Gatorade type drinks. Okay, good. Any other questions? Finance section chief. In finance, we're doing okay. Um, we've got everything is going really smooth. One thing that I want to draw your attention to is is to make sure that you guys get your CTRs in a timely fashion. Um, another concern that I have, and maybe we can just handle this after the meeting, but I would like to visit with Laverne about the land and who's owns that property so that we make sure we get the appropriate agreements in place. Public information officer. Good afternoon. We've had a great deal of interest from the media with this fire, so we've had escorts on a daily basis. I expect that to continue, although we have had some issues and some reports where media has showed up on the line without PPE or being escorted operations. If you could let your divisions know to contact me on the radio, I'll be monitoring it so we can go out and get them back to camp. I've also posted an information officer in the housing project that's located in this area as that they seem to be affected by our fire and they have a great deal of interest, so they are there answering questions. Any questions for me? Liaison officer. Good afternoon. We've only had one problem that I've heard of from our assisting and cooperating agencies, and that was an issue with uh, barricades. Uh, it resulted from a communication problem between the Highway Patrol and the Sheriff's Department. Uh, that issue has been resolved, and barricades will be manned 24 hours per day. Any questions? Agency administrators, State of South Dakota. Thank you. Just had one question for operations. As you're putting the plan together, you identified a number of engines. Are you maximizing the use of uh, local volunteer fire departments for those engines? Uh, we're trying to, in any way, shape, or possible, maximize that use of the local VFDs. How, however, we're trying to recognize the fact that there is some initial attack issues going on, too. We want to hold some engines back for that. Okay, thanks. United States Forest Service. Jim, I just wanted to say thanks for uh, releasing as many resources as you, as you could as quick as possible to get our initial attack forces back up. Uh, we still are trying to track down a couple of dozer bosses for you to, to help out. Okay, great. Thanks, thanks a lot. Support of the plan. Operations? Yes. Air operations? Yes. Safety? Yes. Logistics? Yes. Finance? Public information officer? Yes. Plans will support the plan. Reminders, night operations briefing, 1800. Next planning meeting will be tomorrow morning, 0900. We need IAP components at 1900. IC, do you support the plan? I support the plan, I have comments. Closing comments. 
Uh, real quick, you know, I've done a good, a good job so far. We have uh, one thing, uh, each one of you and your different sections, I want you to start looking real hard at, and at your folks and make sure they're complying with the work rest guidelines and we start moving back uh, to get in compliance. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your participation in the planning meeting. We'll see you at the next one. You have just seen a planning meeting. Please review with your group the material that was presented in the video. The last meeting that we will take a look at is an operations briefing. Let's take a look at one that is now in progress. Good morning. Welcome to the 0600 operational briefing. I'm the planning section chief. Please shut off radios and cell phones and we'll get started. Incident objectives, we have them posted up here on the board. They haven't changed since the last operational period. We'll start with current situation, night operations section chief. Good morning. We had a good shift last night. Uh, conditions were favorable. And going around starting in Division Alpha, we completed our dozer line going up to the Bravo break. Crews are, are uh, improving that. In Division Bravo, uh, our dozer line was taken off down this drainage, and we're bringing fire along with us and continuing to construct dozer line as we still have open fire line in Bravo. Also in Charlie, our dozer line is uh, coming from the top, from the from the north end, working towards the Charlie Bravo break. A lot of uncontrolled fire line here. Crews are are bringing fire with it with the dozers. In Division Yankee, this line is is in is complete using the existing road systems, and crews are mopping up. And also in Division Zulu. The road systems, forest service road systems that we use for a line, crews are, this is holding well and crews are mopping up 100 feet in. Fire weather, incident meteorologist. Thank you. Good morning. Weather summary for the fire area today. I'm expecting sunny conditions this morning, uh, becoming partly sunny this afternoon with a chance of afternoon thunderstorms. Maximum temperature should be about 92 degrees on the fire. Minimum relative humidity, 20%. Winds northeast this morning, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Uh, becoming southeast at 5 to 10 uh, this afternoon with gusty and erratic winds in the vicinity of any thunderstorms. Probability of precipitation is about 30% this afternoon. Haines index is 5 um, LAL is one this morning and then three this afternoon. There is red flag, a red flag warning in effect for the fire area tomorrow for hot, dry, and windy conditions. Any questions? Thanks. Fire behavior, fire behavior analyst. As you heard from the IMET, we should have some pretty favorable conditions overall today, but watch for the wind shift and uh, erratic winds around the thunderstorms. Uh, will be a challenging day tomorrow. Uh, what we've seen on this fire generally has been uh, uh, potential for up strong uphill runs with short crown runs, torching, spotting uh, during the heat of the day when the slope and the heavy fuels have combined. Uh, without that combination, we've generally seen it uh, remain at the surface. Uh, our most challenging terrain is on the north and the east sides. Uh, we've got numerous uh, chutes and steep ground. Uh, and uh, in the broken topography. On the west side, it's still some steep areas, but it's more of a continuous slope. Uh, the fuels are very dry. The ERCs are uh, going to be at 63 today, which is above the 90th percentile. And please review the uh, pocket card attached in the IAP. In general, what we're looking at is uh, moderate uh, surface fire working its way down the hill by backing and flanking. And it should remain uh, within the capability of engines, crews, and dozers for direct attack. 
in Divisions Bravo and Charlie specifically. Uh, look at surface fire with moderate rates of spread. Uh, fire will continue to work its way down towards the control line. Good opportunity to burn out uh, line early, but uh, you need to be done before the afternoon wind shifts and, uh, and uh, thunderstorms. Need to manage your intensity of your burning uh, to reduce the risk of torching and associated spotting. In Divisions Yankee, Zulu, and Alpha, we're going to be looking at uh, good opportunities to mop up, looking at uh, creeping and smoldering uh, as the heavy fuels continue to burn. Uh, one thing you have to watch for is the risk of uh, uh, something taking off an undetected spot that gets into that uh, steep ground. You're going to uh, need to have engines, dozers, or aircraft to contain the heads of any of those spots. Should be able to go direct on the flanks and the heel, though. Uh, for air operations, the smoke should lift out early today, but watch out for the winds around the thunderstorms. They could ha hamper your operations. For safety, remember to base all your actions on current and expected fire behavior. When wind, slope, and maximum solar heating combine, you know, expect a large increase in the uh, rates of spread and, and uh, flame lengths. Uh, one thing we want to do is to continue to relay our weather OBS back to the ICP uh, through communications and have a good, safe day. Plan for the operational period, day operations, Section Chief. Thanks. Morning. Uh, as you can see from our discussion of the fire weather and fire behavior, we got a pretty serious day's work ahead of us here. We'll start it off with, with Division Alpha. Uh, Division Alpha Soup. Here. Okay, we have our Division Group Supervisor right there. I want you to hold your breakout over on the east side of the parking lot there and do a roll call out that time. And for the rest of you Division Group Soups out there, uh, just ensure to hold your roll call at your assigned breakout area. And uh, moving with, uh, with Division Alpha, I want you to start working at drop point two there. Start working your way north, just right, just right up to just right up to drop point three. Um, you'll be able to hold that fire on those existing Forest Service system roads. So I should have a pretty good day's work ahead of there for you there. Looking for Division Bravo Supervisor. Okay. Um, your assigned breakout area will be on the uh, south side of the parking lot there. And uh, you're going to have pretty much the hot side of the fire there, you and Division Charlie. Uh, start from drop point three. Pick up those dozers, been working night shift, get those folks swapped out there, start pushing in line north. Try to go as as direct as possible and keep one foot in the black as you're as you're going up there. Well, I'll be going out and seeing your side of the line here soon, as soon as you guys get started there for the rest of the day. Uh, moving up north to Division Charlie. Okay, on Division Charlie, you'll be meeting over on the west side of the parking lot there. And uh, you'll be coming in over at uh, drop point one. Should be picking up a night operational period dozer. It's been working all night in there. Make sure we get those crews swapped out and start to work your forces and picking it up there. Uh, hopefully, fire conditions are okay. We can do some aerial reconnaissance for you and find where Bravo and Charlie can meet in there in order to tie in our lines. Uh, moving over to a Division Yankee. Okay, for uh, Division Yankee, your breakout will be over on the north side of the parking lot. And uh, you've got a pretty cold side of the fire there for today. Uh, look out for that anticipated wind shift. Uh, you do have some uh, some uh, spot fires. I want you to check on that. have been across the line. And uh, if you can, they've held the fire to the existing Forest Service system roads in there, and you can continue to hold that. And that should work out for the day's operational period there. And moving over to Division Zulu. Okay, um, for Division Zulu, your breakout area will be just right outside the doors here, those big, uh, those big double doors of the building. And uh, for Division Zulu, uh, they've made some good work the last 48 hours in holding that fire to the existing Forest Service system roads in there. And hopefully you'll be able to take your resources, get them put out to um, drop point two and work them up to uh to division yankee so i'm looking forward to a good day's work out there division soups have your uh next next uh, incident operational shift needs into me by uh 1200 hours and um is there any questions thanks Rob. 
Air Operations, Air Operations Branch Director. Thank you. Good morning. Um, if you turn to your Air Operations Summary and your uh, Incident Action Plans, um, in the Remarks section, I've addressed some issues in there that we need to uh, work with uh, your Division Group Supervisors. Please request all the air um, aircraft through air attack, if you would, please. And also, the, the Hella base has been moved uh, where we previously were yesterday uh, over here on this intersection, we've moved it to Spearfish. And we've replaced that Hella base with a Hella spot. Um, the Medevac helicopter will be 5 Mike Alpha. And um, also, it's going to be a, uh, uh, used for water drops. But also, it's for medevac, and we're going to use uh, the Hellespot 1 for pickup at that location. Um, we have a, a TFR in place for the fire. It's five miles radius from the center of the fire and 2,000 feet altitude uh, above ground level. And the frequencies are air to ground. Uh, division supervisors, if you could double check and make sure your people all have uh, that 170.000 in their radios for uh, air to ground. And if not, uh, they can go over to the communications unit and uh, get their radios cloned before they go out. Um, fixed wing aircraft we have on the incident today, uh, we got two heavy air tankers. Uh, they'll be available at 0900. They're at the Rapid City Air Tanker Base, uh, Tanker 22 and Tanker 16. And uh, we have two single-engine air tankers, uh, Tanker 461 and Tanker 462. They're at the Spearfish um, Hella Base and Seat Base there at the airport, and they're available also at 0900. Um, we have a lead plane, Lead 88, that'll be working with them fixed-wing aircraft. And also, uh, we have two air attacks today on the incident, so we have continuous coverage. And they're available at 0800. They will be over the incident at 0800. It's uh, lead, or uh, excuse me, air attack, one Alpha Bravo, and uh, six three Foxtrot are the two air attack platforms that we have. And then again, five Mike Alpha is uh, dedicated to water drops. And so um, they're also available at 0900. They'll be off. Is there any questions? Thank you. Safety message, safety officer. Good morning. Uh, just want to really thank you for having a, a very safe uh, incident so far. You're doing a great job and just keep it up. Now there's a few uh, hazards out there that I want you to make, make you aware of. Uh, one of the biggest hazards we got out there are snags. We got snags all over the place. Uh, when you're going into a new area, be sure and, and check out the area for snags and either flag them out or take them down and mitigate it before you have crews working in those areas. The other situation we have out there is, is communications out here is pretty good right now, but there may be some dead spots, so uh, be sure and check those uh, areas out. If you have a dead spot, establish a human repeater so that we can make uh, have good communications. The other thing is, is Highway 14 just outside the building here. It's, it's a really heavily traveled road. Right now we've got roadblocks in place, but uh, just don't count on that happening throughout the day. You may wind up, uh, they may be opening those things up here uh, later on this afternoon, so watch out for that traffic on that major highway. The other thing I've noticed out there is, is uh, Long Division uh, Yankee and Zulu, that road in there, it's uh, got a lot of steep ground above it. There's a lot of rocks coming down on the road. You'll probably see them. Uh, they're pretty good size, so be careful when you're going through that area. Uh, if you have to park along there, be sure and get well out of the way and try to do it in such a manner so that if anything comes down those slopes, uh, it won't be uh, either hitting you or your vehicles. The uh, thunderstorms that we may get this afternoon, that can cause a lot of erratic winds, wind shifts, and uh, increase in wind speeds. So be very careful when you see those thunderstorms coming in. Uh, our meteorologists will probably uh, give us a warning and uh, a heads up if, that, uh, if those do develop. So be careful, establish lookouts, and make sure that you have that covered if that, sh if that situation should, should occur. As far as air operations go, just want to reiterate, uh, when we start getting some heavy tankers in there, bucket drops, be sure and brief your crews ahead of time on proper procedures, and uh, make sure you stay clear of where those operations are occurring. Uh, the other thing, it's going to get warm. It's going to be really dry today. 
So be sure and hydrate and uh, use plenty of water. And I think logistics may cover that a little bit further in their briefing. Um, the other thing is, is we want to make sure that you understand that, uh, you know, I'm just a safety officer here. You guys make it happen. You're the ones that are out there. And be sure and make sure that LCES is in place. Lookouts, communications, escape routes, and safety zones. Establish that before you start your day and make sure that's known to everyone. And you all have a great day, and we'll see you this evening. Logistics message, logistics section chief. Thank you, and good morning. Uh, first of all, I want to remind all you division soups to make sure your crews pick up their noon meals at the uh, proper places over certain meals. Make sure they have their breakfast uh, right away this morning. Next thing will be make sure they get their ice in the water. Uh, that's hot out there. We don't want them getting dehydrated, and we do have plenty of ice and water for uh, make sure they stay hydrated. The other one will be uh, if you have any tools or equipment that you've uh, requested and ordered, make sure you stop over at the end, st outer staging area where we have our white uh, truck parked and pick up your tools and supplies you ordered yesterday when you came in. They should all be there ready for you to go and bring in your ones that you've broke or need to replace. Uh, with that, uh, have a safe day. Medical unit leader. Good morning. We've seen a number of cases of poison ivy, especially uh, in Division Bravo and Charlie, so I want to heads up on that. Um, I've printed out some information and pictures on the poison ivy plant. Those will be posted both in the medical unit and throughout camp. Can't stress enough, you need to stay hydrated out there. There's plenty of water, Gatorade, power drinks available, so make sure you're uh, drinking plenty of fluids. Uh, also, you've seen uh, there are numerous hand washing stations located in camp. Please use those. Identify your EMTs uh, on both crews and engines when you're working out there in your divisions. In case of a medical emergency, make sure that you refer to the medical plan in the IAP and use those procedures. Uh, report any injuries to the medical unit, and is there any questions for the medical unit? Thank you. Communications unit leader. There will be a change in the comm plan today. We've got a second repeater set up over here on Pillar Peak, so the uh, dead spots in uh, Divisions Charlie and uh, Bravo should be taken care of. That will be on Channel 7. Uh, we're going to have to reclone the radios today to uh, coincide with the comm plan. If you have any uh, communications uh, issues or anything, bring them up to our attentions or one of our techs. Thank you. Finance message, Finance Section Chief. Good morning. Please turn in your CTRs at the end of each operational period at the finance section and the state fire number, for those of you who do not know, is FFN 064096 and the federal number is P2B6TH. And if you have any questions on completing the CTRs, please come to finance and we'll help you. And for those of you, I just want to make everybody aware that on the information boards that are around camp, there are lists of people that we need to see in finance that we have questions on your CTRs or on your contract or whatever. Just please come check with us. Thanks. Information message, information officer. Good morning. We have had a great deal of interest from the media on this fire and we are escorting them. We have had some reports of media out on the line without escorts and without their PPE division soups. If you get reports of that, please just holler. I'm monitoring the radio and I'll come out and escort them in. We've also had questions coming out of the community. We spent a lot of um, time out into the community with the folks around the area. They're very pleased with the job you guys are doing. I wanted to let you know that and they're um, thrilled to have you here working on the fire. 
Also, we've established some bulletin boards around camp, so there will be information for finance and uh, safety up on those boards, and please keep an eye out for those. Any questions? Thank you. Agency administrator comments, State of South Dakota. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, really want to tell you how much we appreciate the good work of the team and all the firefighters who've come to help us. Uh, before you guys got here, things were really not looking good. We had a lot of structures at risk. We haven't lost any. We really appreciate that. Uh, we just want to tell you to keep up the good work, uh, and we really appreciate the, the work that you're doing for us. Thank you. United States Forest Service. Good morning. I would li like to say thank you for uh, your hard work. I appreciate your support on initial attack in the local area around the incident. And uh, a couple of things. Uh, watch your speed on the highway. Uh, make sure you got your headlights on. Watch your uh, using your seatbelt. And uh, I really appreciate your guys' uh, safe, aggressive tactics. And uh, also, I appreciate your efforts towards cost containment. Closing comments, Incident Commander. Thank you. You've heard this a lot of times, but I want to again thank all of you um, uh, for the hard work that was done out there on Fireline. Um, we've gone a long way in uh, meeting our tactical objectives the last couple of days. Remember, safety is always a concern on this incident, and again, we can't stress on that enough. Uh, a couple of things. Remember, we got thunderstorm activity in the area. Heads up. Good situational awareness. And tomorrow we have red flag. Other than that, uh, keep up the good work and have a safe shift. Thank you. Division breakouts were assigned by the operations section chief. Unassigned resources, come up and see me at the end of briefing. Our next operational briefing is at 1800 hours. Thank you for coming. Have a safe shift. I hope this video has been useful and you now understand the meetings involved in the planning process and an operations briefing.